Hello everyone. So the commonality that we're seeing right now and that I discuss in a lot of videos is that uh, the skill level between most modern metal releases uh, is through the roof, but the creativity is pretty much at a career low point for the genre. It's almost a direct relationship. You see that most of the records that are being released now sound the same in terms of production value, uh, note choice being used, the scales the bands write in, uh, the overall atmosphere, uh, they're, they're pretty interchangeable. And this is something that is very unfortunate because the genre itself has limitless potential. Uh, I mean, if, if you come to this channel, you're gonna think that I harp on anyone that steps outside the box and it has to be a certain way for it to be metal, and that's not true. But there are many ways to not be metal, and what we're seeing right now with most of these modern releases is this kind of uniformity, which is just incredibly anti-metal. Um, what we want to see is that untapped potential being explored in this genre, and when bands mimic each other to the point where you can't tell who's who, uh, it ends up being a situation where the trend is ruling the genre. And that's why old school metalheads hate what's happening now, is because we don't like to see the genre being uh, run by the trend. And uh, what we like to do when we see a problem like this, we, we try to find out a way to fix it. And in order to do that, you have to identify where the problem originates. And obviously mimicry is the main issue, but in order to determine what the actual issue is, we have to, we have to find out what is being mimicked. And I made the mistake in previous videos in thinking that all of it is traced back to essentially necrophagist and, and metalcore bands and a little sprinkling of Dillinger Escape Plan too. But what I didn't add to the formula is a really important band and I didn't add it to the formula because they're not relevant to me. Uh, and it's a band that I heard when they had their demo out and I always put them on the shelf as a, as, as a band that is not gonna be something I'm gonna devote time to because I understand where the band is coming from and it doesn't align itself with the identity of what the genre is. So it can remain where it is and I don't need to go there. Uh, that being said, I think the Black Dahlia murder is the main root of the problem here. And I'll tell you why. So in order to explain this, I have to kind of go way back and give you my uh, full history with the, my experience with metalcore. So I grew up near Chicago and I used to come up to Milwaukee for Milwaukee Metal Fest when I was in high school. And this, I, I had thought because of the Milwaukee Metal Fest and the fact that it was such a big deal and it got so many bands from all over the world that it was just this metal mecca, that it was the place to be if you wanted to uh, explore the genre. And I, I went to college here and I, I, I thought, oh, I could finally, you know, get that death metal band I always wanted to off the ground. And when I got here, I realized that, I realized really quickly that most of the people that came to that metal fest that I had been to several years before living here were people that commuted for it. And there wasn't really a strong metal scene here. There was, you know, really terrible death metal bands and, uh, you know, a handful of decent ones. But for the most part, the, the genre was about to be invaded by that, that metalcore aesthetic and mindset. And it's important to to illustrate that those two things are kind of what make the genre what it is, and it's not necessarily the sound. The, in order to fully comprehend why we hate metalcore, you have to analyze the metalcore brain. And the, what I had realized with all the friends I had tried to make in getting these bands off the ground was that the people that participated in whatever metalcore was becoming and where it would lead in terms of how it's being kind of the backbone for modern metal now, uh, you have to really analyze the, the, the mindset of it. And that mindset is not a metal mindset. That mindset is an aesthetic gleaning leech that tries to dom the face of whatever's popular and 
put it on top of a backbone that is not metal because the people that make up the metalcore scene are not misanthropic in any way. They don't analyze the failures of, of the human psyche. They are gluttonous. They're, um, for the most part, really hedonistic. All stuff that metal people know is a dead end. So I had the displeasure of seeing a genre that I loved for basic tenets that it was trying to explore uh, be totally pillaged by what is essentially the modern frat boy mind. And I floundered trying to get a band off the ground. I wound up playing with people like this and knowing that there was this profound disconnect where I was trying to force a, a metal backbone into someone something that did not correspond to it in terms of the modern mind. Uh, and that modern mind is now tenfold. It, it, got, it got further mutated with the advent of social media and all of those aspects that kind of make you a hedonistic wandering asshole are now through the roof and we have what we have now. Uh, and it was, it was unfortunate because that the, I, I, I grew to realize that the mindset that creates metal actual metal is is rapidly in decline and the the celebration of that hedonistic lifestyle was now going to be the focus and uh, I realized that metalcore fans liked certain elements of real metal they like black metal vocals they like the idea of a, a wild genre of music something that sounds superficially intense uh, something that they could tell their friends is, is something that is kind of uh, on the fringe to show that they have depth, but they don't really understand that you have to have that identifiable trait of knowing what is bullshit and how much of the world is bullshit and why we flock to this genre to explore that all of those elements that drive that bullshit are the problem, whereas the people that are starting to become part of this subgenre now would celebrate it instead. And uh, the Black Dahlia murder is the perfect marriage of all of those things. And uh, when the demo came out, the, the people that I was surrounded by would play it and be like, well, you, you'll like this, this is like actual metal. And I could, I could just hear that it was not done by metal people, you can kind of hear it. You know how you could hear when a band is Christian, but you can't tell why, you can do that with metalcore. You could just hear that empty, vapid mindset coming through. And it doesn't help when all of the characteristics of the music are, you could, you could, you could, sh you could see instantly where they stole it from. Like at the, the first demo, you could hear all of that uh, Gothenburg scene coming through. You could hear, <coughs> I think in the first song, the first album, you could, you could hear a totally cop version of Under the Serpent Sun from At the Gates. Um, you can hear, you know, the, the black metal vocals, the raspy vocals, because, you know, hard, hardcore kids and metalcore kids didn't like, um, you know, death metal vocal. Um, you could hear all of that, but now it's being done by metalcore kids. And I don't want to, I'm not going to drag hardcore through the mud, because the important thing to remember is metalcore is not the marriage of metal and hardcore. It's not. Metalcore was hated by hardcore kids and metal dudes. It's, it's like a, it, 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 even though it, like, by name alone, you would think that it's a marriage of the two things, but it's really not. It's, it's the result of a certain mindset absorbing all of these outward aesthetic traits and draping them across their vapid skeleton and putting it through as if it's metal. And I, in order to fully understand the difference between the kind of minds that produce music in each of these genres, you would have to sit down and have a conversation with each. And you'll see instantly that the hardcore people, you know, they, they have a very political backbone. The metal people have this nihilism going on where we understand how much of the world is bullshit. And the metalcore people are your frat boys. And that it, that's why it's such an anti-metal mindset because it's so hedonistic, so manipulative, and it makes no apology for what it is, but it sometimes tries to pretend that it has depth. And that's when metalheads draw their ire. Um, that being said, 
the Black Dahlia Murder, and I, I decided to listen to some tracks from each of their records because I really want to know why all these bands sound the same. And, and I don't just mean production, I mean the note choices. Why are the note choices all the same? Why are the scales being presented as riffs? Why can, why can I predict where the melody is going to end before it gets there? That used to never be a thing in metal. And I listened to this band and I really think that they're the problem. I think that their perfect marriage of the raspy black metal vocal, the Gothenburg style guitar, uh, the, the fact that they had blast beats, which gives the idea of, of extremity, um, all of that done by hardcore, well, metalcore dudes, like visually, was something that uh, is identifiable to the modern mind. You could see like, oh, those guys are like me, but they're doing something more extreme. I wanna do that too. And metal guys, like real metal guys, are not easy to identify with because we don't like people. We don't like those elements of humanity that plague all of us and we know that it's a dead end. But the modern metal metalcore person celebrates all that shit and anyone can wander into a room and identify with that person way more than you can identify with uh, you know, a political hardcore guy or a misanthropic metal guy. <coughs> That's why it kind of like became its own plague and, and ravaged the, the, the metal scene and is still prevalent with the modern metal bands today. And you know, you have, you have these modern bands that uh, are putting out releases now that don't show any of those elements of the disgust for humanity that is kind of necessary to put out something that is noteworthy in the metal scene. And uh, it's, it's something that, that I understand is there's a lot of time that goes into it. You know, a lot of, a lot of skill is on display and I'm, I'll, never, I'll never say that that's not the case, but there's no meaning behind it when you don't have an ideology attached, which all the great metal bands did. And <clears throat> if you glean for ideology and you try to figure out what they're saying, you come to that conclusion that, that, that vacuous gluttony, that hedonism that is just so disappointing to metal people is fully on display. And uh, I think that the main issue with a lot of these modern bands is because Black Dahlia was like a weird marriage of, of uh, metal, metal traits that were fully established. Now you have that copy of a copy thing. Have you ever seen that movie Multiplicity with Michael Keaton where he like clones himself so he can do chores and go to work and shit? Well, one of the clones becomes a clone of itself. So there's a copy of a copy. And that's what we have now with modern metal where it's, and, and in that movie, that clone ended up being like pretty slow. And uh, it, it's, a, it's an analogy I'm trying to make because now that we don't have an actual metal band that all the modern, beta, modern metal bands are citing as their source of inspiration or are not directly citing, but are clearly emulating, we know that it's, they're emulating something that has already been a mishmash of established metal tropes so it's a copy of a copy and that that translation the 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 metalness is lost in translation and now it's just amplified aesthetic traits because that's the only thing that you can that can remain after something has been processed so many times and 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 because of that process now we have a product we don't have a statement we have a product and it's something that any band can put together if they have enough time to develop their skills, understand their scales, start presenting elements of those scales in their riffs so that people can be like, oh, it sounds noty, it sounds busy. Uh, it, it's, it's a formula now. And nowhere in that formula do you see any kind, of, any kind of contemplation on what the actual intent behind your emotion is. You just see the, the development of skills. And when you, when you get to the point where you can't, you can't establish meaning, or you can no longer establish meaning, you'll look to the tools used to establish meaning to find it. So you're, you'll, you'll have people arguing that, oh, it's, it's great because can't you see how hard it is? Can't you see how much time is put into it? Can't you see that you know, they've devoted their life to their craft and they've been in X many bands and they have a label? And all of that stuff is used to rationalize 
when you have this emptiness that's your backbone for your music. It's all of the outward traits, all of the artificialities, all of the superficial things that people can immediately see. They'll use that as their argument to, to kind of try to formulate in their heads and in the heads of other people they're arguing with that there is validation to what this music is. And <clears throat> I want it to be valid. Like I say in many videos, I want to be inspired by what I'm hearing. I want to hear the music, know who the player is, know um, what their motives are, and know that there's passion behind it more than I want to be skilled at my instrument and I want people to acknowledge it. And none of that is present in this modern music. And I think it came from the fact that the bands that they're copying now are copies of other bands. You, it, like before, you can be like, oh, that was, you know, that's an At The Gates band, or that's an In Flames band, or whatever. But now, it's bands that have copied those bands that are the main influences for a lot of these bands. And all of, uh, all of the crux of what those bands were being copied for is now missing, and the aesthetic is what people are leeching onto. And <clears throat> when you have music that is aesthetic forward and missing the backbone, that's when people like me are gonna be like, you know, this no longer applies to the metal genre. The metal genre is supposed to have something that is resembling depth. It's supposed to have backbone. It's not just supposed to be aesthetics. You know, if you want a, if you're trying to say that your genre is just aesthetics, it's gonna be the old joke of what people said, like, oh, their parents imagine metal sounds like, or imagine what metal is. You know, it's, it's total noise, it's total this. Well, that would apply if there's nothing to dissect. And now, there's nothing to dissect. That's the problem. There's aesthetics, and once you, once you are able to dissect that, if you really want to get into the theory behind it, what else do you have? And I, I want that to not be the case, but that's where we are. <clears throat> and in order to get around that, in order to kind of cure this problem, we have to identify the bands that other bands are ripping off, find out who they ripped off, find out why it was not successful or what about it kind of in a way was, and try to circumvent that in terms of whether or not that is going to be what gets in the way of individual expression. When you get to the, the, the inception layers of emulation, then you no longer have real inspiration. And that's why I'm so hard on all these bands, is because I, I put on the music and I could instantly hear who they're ripping off. I can hear the motive not aligning itself with something that is trying to be timeless and have depth. And I can tell the kind of people that they are. And, I, and those kind of people just aren't inherently metal. And that's gonna sound gatekeepery, and it, and it is, in a way. Because not everyone can belong to this genre. You can't just learn a skill and belong to this genre. I can't learn jazz and become jazz. I can't learn classical and become classical. My, in, my inside mindset is that of metal. And that's not something that can be learned. And people don't seem to understand that. And I know that that's gonna be harsh. You know, it's gonna be like, oh, you're, you can't be involved. You can't be in. You can celebrate metal all you want. I don't care if you listen to it and like it. But you can't participate in it and create in it if you don't have that backbone, if you don't have the idea that you have depth that you're exploring, that you have intent beyond the skill, beyond the aesthetics. And that's not what I'm hearing. That's not what is being displayed beyond what, whether or not I can hear it. It's just not there. And as bands continue to emulate bands that have emulated other bands, and this is going to continue in the future, we're gonna have bands that are like, no, oh, Archspire is my main influence. Well, what was Archspire? And you could pin it down to three or two different bands that they ripped off. You're going to get down to that point where it's going to be so streamlined that it's just going to resemble more and more a product, like, like craft singles. It's going to look like that on the shelf. It's going to have, the, and it's already there. It, the, all, the, all the records have the same artwork with the monster like smashing up a, a city and uh, you know you have the same logos, you have the same, uh, the same kind of production value where if, if you look at, at the actual wave file, it's just 
completely compressed, like one straight line, no dynamics, because that's what, that's what metal is, it's extremity. No, that's not what it is. Uh, that's, that's where we're heading, and that's kind of where we already are. So I don't feel like Black Dahlia Murder is a band that I need to give more time to. I was able to establish from a, a cursory glance throughout their discography that I think this is it. You know, I think this is the band that people are seeing is comprised of those metalcore dudes that can harness the aesthetic value of metal and get a huge discography out of it. And I think that that is what modern bands are trying to emulate. So that's about all I have to say about that. I would, I, and, and I don't want to come off as saying you cannot be inspired by other bands and use that inspiration to create. Everything is inspired by everything else. That being said, if your product that you are emulating is inherently vapid, the product you're going to be putting out based on that inspiration is going to be even more so. And whether or not you want to understand that or even analyze it in any way, if, even if you don't think that that's there, other people are gonna pick up on it. And that's the nature of processing art. We can hear you even if you can't hear you. So thank you for listening.